Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, DwyerVIP.com for free premium sports picks. Look us up in the sports section on Roku. We're there. Dwyer Boxing and Sports News. <clears throat> you know, all of us use different methods to figure out who's going to win different sporting events. In boxing, when looking at boxing fights, I try not to get too caught up in fighters' personalities. I found that uh, in one-on-one -on -one sports, many times people are delusional. Every fighter thinks they're the future of boxing when they start out uh, their career with a lot of knockouts. Right? Fighters really do sometimes underestimate their opponents, overestimate themselves, believe that the sport's static, not dynamic, believe that they're going to be able to come in, follow a game plan, that there'll be no surprises or unforeseen circumstances of any kind whatsoever. So I'm more interested in what fighters say after fights than I am before fights. Because after fights, they've actually experienced what happened in the ring. And many of these fighters are very open in telling you what surprised them and what happened exactly as they expected. Right? So at that point, that's when I get a measure of the athlete's personality. Going into a fight, I really don't focus too much on trying to profile an athlete's personality. But it's different in team sports. Right? Team sports has a group dynamic where you really do have to look at the group and ask yourself, where is the leadership? Who's going to step up and who's going to do what? Right? One of the reasons why, in my opinion, the Dallas Cowboys in the National Football League here in the United States have had all kinds of problems is because, in my opinion, owner Jerry Jones, who does not know football as well as he thinks he does, in my opinion, continually undercuts the authority of his head coach. Right? So as a result, you have a situation, in my opinion, where a lot of the players are looking around for leadership and they know they're not going to get it from the head coach Jerry has hired. I also think when you hire talented people, you need to allow them to be themselves. You need to allow them to, you know, be creative. You cannot micromanage talented people. And in my opinion, when Jerry Jones stands on the sidelines at the end of games, players understand that they're being scrutinized and it's destabilizing. Right? I actually prefer the invisible owners over the owners who want to be seen on camera, owners who are standing on the sideline next to players in between offensive and defensive possessions. <clears throat> well, let's uh, flip the script and let's talk about basketball. LeBron James versus Michael Jordan. Right, I'm a bit surprised uh, now that I have some gray, now that I have a few years on me, I'm surprised how often I'm out, just hanging out, and a younger person who knows I'm into sports will come up to me. Right, you know, I'll be putting the pint down on the bar and someone will come over, start talking about LeBron James, right, I must have a LeBron jersey on or something that I don't know about, and, uh, They'll start asking me about Michael Jordan. So I look at the person and I realize the person is in their early 20s and that they didn't see Jordan play in his prime. Or maybe they saw Jordan at the tail end of his career when he was wearing a Washington Wizards jersey and not the number 23 Chicago Bull jersey that he literally has made a part of NBA folklore. Right now, I don't know how else to put it. Personalities matter. Right? Group dynamics matter. Understand Jordan and LeBron are both immensely talented, but they were different, at least in my eyes. 
I think LeBron's one of the best players I've ever seen. Right? In terms of talent, he's off the page. Right? But, <clears throat> personality-wise, just based on what I've seen on TV, I don't know LeBron from anybody else. I've never met LeBron in my life. But LeBron, personality-wise, is more Pippin than Jordan. Right? I mean, understand, when you say Jordan, you're talking about Alpha. You're talking about Peyton Manning. <clears throat> you're talking about a guy who, when he walks out the tunnel onto the court, everyone in the arena knew that the buck stopped there. Right? Jordan's like Bruce Springsteen. He was the boss. Now keep in mind, when we talk about leaders, that doesn't necessarily mean that the guy is the best on the team. It just means that you know who is the top dog emotionally on the team. You know who the people on the team are looking at for guidance. Right? <clears throat> Put another way, in football, a few years ago, you had Ray Lewis as the middle linebacker for the Baltimore Ravens. Now, there were other great Ravens on that team, right? Younger guys, faster guys, guys who physically were better than Ray Lewis, right? This is toward the tail end of Ray Lewis's career. But you understood when you thought Baltimore Ravens, when you thought intensity, when you thought for a second, gee, who's the vet in this locker room who can just look around the locker room? And if he matches eyes with guys, the guys will know, gee, it's on right now. This is the moment where we have got to deliver. You understood on that Baltimore Raven team, that person was Ray Lewis. Right? I don't consider LeBron James <clears throat> as having that, right? I'll say this, you know, I'm not saying that leaders have to give rah-rah speeches. I'm not saying that at all. But you know a leader when you see one, right? LeBron, great player immensely talented. He's not Magic Johnson. He's not Larry Bird. He's not Michael Jordan. He's not Peyton Manning. Right? What you have is really a real talented guy who wants to be one of the fellas I would argue that on the Heat, Dwayne Wade has more leadership skills than LeBron James. It's just that Wade, because of a knee injury that sapped a lot of his effectiveness, right, isn't the player that LeBron James is, right? Wade's no longer the player, and let's be real here, right? This is the outside the mainstream media <laughs> part of YouTube, right? Dwayne Wade's not the player he was when LeBron got to Miami. When LeBron got to Miami, didn't you feel that Dwayne Wade was the older, more seasoned, more credible voice in that Heat locker room? How long has Peyton Manning been with the Broncos? Is there a single... Bronco that you can think of right now who has more authority, more legitimacy in that Bronco locker room than Peyton Manning. Right? Leaders really almost just take over. And it's organic. The leader might not even know he's a leader. I can tell you I was a Giants fan for years. Right? There's one thing I knew. 
when Michael Strahan was a veteran, and keep in mind, Strahan had some health problems. Strahan also had some struggles with giant ownership where Strahan clearly didn't want to attend training camp. He was not the most dedicated giant. But the one thing I knew watching Giant games was that he was our Ray Lewis. He was the leader. The buck stopped with him. Right? He could not only play well himself, but he could get spectacular performances from the other guys on that defensive front. You had some great players there, Justin Tuck, a bunch of other guys, but they looked at him, no matter how talented they were, they could have even known they were better players than Strahan. Right? But they understood, hey, this thing we got going here, with this team, right? It goes through Michael Strahan. You know, you look at a guy for leadership. Right? So, I'll say this. Put me among those who, you know, looks at LeBron, looks at Kevin Durant, looks at Carmelo Anthony, and thinks, wow, these guys are spectacular players. They're among the very best in the NFL. But none of those men is a Ronnie Lott. Right? You know what I'm talking about. You know, anyone who's played team sports, they know when you're with some guy and you understand, hey, you know, this guy is running the show. I can tell you, when I first started watching the Lakers, right, the Lakers looked disorganized and stuff like that. This is late 70s, right? They had Kareem, but they were a bit disorganized and stuff. Magic Johnson shows up. Right now, at the time, understand, Magic was a bit controversial back then, right? Because Magic left school early. And I can tell you, suddenly, the Lakers fell in line. I don't even know how else to put it. You were watching the Lakers, you were seeing guys who were much older than Magic. But all of those guys immediately understood, right, that their general had arrived, right? The whole show went through Magic Johnson. Suddenly, out of all of this disorder, there was order. This is while the team was running fast breaks. Right? And Magic rubbed some people the wrong way. Paul West had probably lost his job because of Magic. Right? Magic wasn't a big fan of his head coach. But you understood that after Magic arrived, no matter how many first pick of the drafts they had or joined the team, James Worthy, uh, Michael Thompson, keep in mind he was also picked first in the draft, right? Kareem, you know, you understood that they were looking at Magic Johnson for guidance, right? I'll even go a step further. You know, I've never seen a team that Jason Kidd was on as a player where Jason Kidd was not the leader. I know there's a brief moment in Dallas when they had Jim Jackson and Jamal Mashburn where there was some tension there. But understand, you know, <coughs> Jason Kidd, well, certainly when he's a New Jersey Net with Kenyon Martin and others, and he gets the Nets to two NBA championship series. It was obvious that Jason Kidd was the leader of that team. What we have right now are an era of guys who don't have that aura, right? I love MVP Kevin Durant. Love him. Kevin Durant is more of a Scottie Pippen than he is a Michael Jordan, right? He is. You know, if you were to put Kevin Durant with, not... Russell Westbrook, but if you were to put him with Chris Paul, I mean, geez, the whole thing would come together. 
right? You know the guys who literally can just stand up, look around the locker room, no speech needed, and everyone understands we need to not only get on the same page, we need to get on his page. I'm guessing that's the way it is right now in the Denver Bronco locker room. So as you consider the stats of LeBron versus Michael, as you consider the championships of LeBron versus Michael, right? As you even consider the lifestyles of LeBron versus Michael, right? LeBron looks like he's a very corporate family man. Michael Jordan was a late night guy. I know the type. <laughs> he was a late night guy who liked to hang around casinos, who from time to time would get photographed smoking cigars, who from time to time you would hear about you know, him roughing up teammates physically in practice who would, from time to time, trash talk with fans, right? As you know, all of that. Just understand that Jordan was Peyton Manning, right? LeBron's a different personality type, right? Great player you know, aspires to be a leader and tries to be a leader at times. But as you're seeing in this NBA championship series, he doesn't carry the weight with his teammates that on the other sideline, Tim Duncan does. Let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Let me throw some more red meat out there. Russell Wilson. Seattle. I'm telling you, this guy clearly is a leader. I'm not saying Russell Wilson is the best quarterback in the league. I'm not saying that at all, but what I am saying is the way he carries himself, the way he goes about his business on a team with many strong personalities, many stars on that Seattle team, but I'm sure everyone in that locker room knows that Russell Wilson has a vision and that he symbolizes the franchise. Now I'm here in the Bay Area and I'm here to tell you that's different than a physically more talented quarterback in Colin Kaepernick. Right? I think Kaepernick is a very talented guy, but I don't think he conveys that level of vision to his teammates. Right? As they play in the same division it's going to get interesting right it's going to get interesting as I said you know these um, Peyton Manning type leaders they're few and far between understand Jordan was clearly one I don't believe Will Chamberlain was that kind of leader clearly Bill Russell was let me hear from you. Leave your comments for me here online. Visit us at gamblersadvisory.com. Thanks for stopping by.